Welcome to the people's house. Amen. Right? This is your house. This is your house. This is the United States Capitol Building Rotunda. And this is an amazing place and we are privileged to be here. And we're talking about lost episodes in American history and the fact that they can be found right here in this building, in these paintings, and in these statues. And we're gonna uncover those as we go along. You know, we're warned in scripture that uh, we're not to move the ancient boundaries. Why? Because when we go back to those ancient pillars, we begin to learn and understand how we ought to live today. And so the Lost Episode Tour does that. It takes you to those pillars of truth that this nation was founded upon. And it causes us, I believe, at least it's true in my life, to have a renewed boldness, to have a renewed hope. Uh, because the scripture says that what God has begun, he will finish. And that's not only true for an individual, it could be true for a nation if we go back to those ancient pillars, those foundational truths. This is called the embarkation of the pilgrims. And so here are these pilgrims, they're kneeling in prayer, they're around an open Bible. You've got John Robinson, their pastor, there with the open hands looking up to heaven. You got Elder William Brewster, who became the Mission Church pastor once they came over here, with the vision of that pastor, John Robinson, to come over here and plant the gospel and win people for Jesus Christ. And you understand the idea of what led them to flee England for Holland, then eventually to America. In fact, 55 of his 300 strong member congregation came over with the first voyage. And again, it's one major church relocation project, okay? <laughs> You know, through the decades, our school systems and the curriculum in our public schools has been so altered that the average American doesn't know American history. And what they are least informed about is the godly heritage of America, the, the founding principles, where they came from. They don't understand the Judeo-Christian roots upon which America was founded. So when the pilgrims landed, Way outside their charter, they drafted a one-page document for governing themselves. We call it the Mayflower Compact. You remember how it begins? In the name of God, and it proceeds for the glory of God and for the advancement of the Christian faith. And it says that they pledged in the presence of God and one another to covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic. Now, where did they get these ideas? And they talked about elections and getting officers and ordinances and all kinds of things needing to be established that they had to do because they were outside of the original charter that the king had delivered. So they had to write their own, basically, the Mayflower Compact that set forth their government. It's basically the birth certificate of America. But where did they get it? Where did they get the ideas for representative government? Choosing their own leaders. Well, they got them from their pastor, John Robinson, who was getting them from God's Word. One of the goals of the enemy is to block out our past so we don't know who we are in the present and we can't focus on what we ought to be in the future. If we want to know who we are so we can function in the way we want for the future, we have to go back and find out who we were. All right, we've got this famous painting here. You all know this, of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Well, the question to consider is this. Could it be that modern historians, professors, commentators are responsible for passing out fake IDs on these guys? You better believe it, because that's exactly what's happened. 56 guys voted on later signed that document, not only declaring their independence from Great Britain, but their dependence upon God. Four references to God, what are they? The laws of nature and of nature's God, they are, that we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that they appeal to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of their intentions, and then finally, with a firm reliance upon divine providence, we mutually pledge our lives to each other, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Four times they mentioned God. Well, was that just show? Well. Let's talk about this, the fact that this same group, or many of the same group, over the eight-year war for independence, 
15 times called for prayer and fasting or prayer for thanksgiving to Almighty God, called all the colonies to pray. 15 times out of eight years. That doesn't sound like a bunch of irreligious guys to me. For nearly four decades, this battle has been raging in America, saying that there is this separation of church and state and that our government is to com be completely devoid of any type of uh, religious content. Well, you need to come to Washington yourself and see the reality. The reality is this nation was not founded by uh, people who uh, had no idea who God was and what He wanted for this nation. This nation was founded by men who loved God. Not all were believers, but most subscribed to a Christian worldview, and the evidence is overwhelming in this city. Who do you see up there? Benjamin Franklin, that's one of them. Thomas Jefferson, that's the other one. Those are the two least orthodox guys who signed the Declaration of Independence that are prominent and you can see right up front. And yet, in July of 1776, during this same month that they voted for the Declaration of Independence, Ben Franklin was on a committee to design the National Seal. Do you know what he designed? They even have a picture of it. He designed a seal, quote, and this is from the congressional record, Moses lifting up his wand and dividing the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his chariot overwhelmed with the waters and having this motto, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. Not bad for the most irreligious guy. And I think it's a tragedy that many of our young people will be born and raised in this great country and never hear anything about the rich Christian legacy that we have. And if we lose our history, we'll have no, uh, we'll have no moorings to know how to lead uh, in the future. We just simply don't know about a lot of these things. We don't know about the pastors that were behind shaping some of these great you know, governmental leaders. Uh, they, they, they didn't come out of a vacuum. Uh, they came out of some great, great congregations and some great pastors who were teaching their people biblical principles for godly government. And then you've got, of course, Thomas Jefferson. Well, here's some of the bills that he helped introduce in the Virginia State Legislature. Listen to this. A bill punishing disturbers of religious worship and Sabbath breakers. Ten shilling fine if you, if you messed up church service. Number two, <laughs> a bill for appointing days of public fasting and thanksgiving. And preachers were fined 50 shillings if you didn't comply. Now that one didn't pass, but he tried to get it passed. And furthermore, the ACLU and the Americans United for Separation of Church and State would have really been ticked if they had heard this quote that he gave to Reverend Ethan Allen, quote, no nation has ever existed or been governed without religion, nor can be. The Christian religion is the best religion that has been given to man, and I, as chief magistrate of this nation, am bound to give it the sanction of my example. That's least religious. <laughs> One thing that uh, I never grow tired of seeing is, is Christians who come here to Washington and go to the nation's capital. They're at the, the Capitol Dome, walk through the building, and they go on a Christian heritage tour, and they see the overwhelming evidence of what this nation was founded on. Not the philosophies and ideologies of man, but the biblical transcendent truths that we find in God's Word. That's what the founders turned to. And it's like all of a sudden people realize, I do belong here. I am a part of America because America has a history that is right in line with what God is teaching us and where we are as Christians. And we have a duty and a responsibility to preserve and to continue what God has started in this nation. We've been fooled. <laughs> We've been duped. We've been lied to, right? And their IDs have been faked. But now you know the truth about their real identities. They were Bible-believing Christians for the most part, 53 out of 56, more than likely Bible-believing Christians. And that is another lost episode in American history. Come on one of these tours. Take the tour. It will increase your knowledge a hundredfold in terms of how America was founded and why America was founded 
and who those founding fathers were.